mercy. And Father, we come before you today. God, today, Father, I pray you touch us in a special way, God, today. Father, I pray, Father, there be ones here, God, today that may be discouraged along the way. And Father, there may be some that may even be lost, I pray. God, that you'd save and encourage and set free, God, today by the precious blood that was shed at Calvary. I pray that you'd bless the preaching hour. I pray, God, that you'd bless the songs of Zion. Father, I pray, oh, God, that we leave differently than the way we came today. And we love you and we thank you for all that you do. In Christ's name we pray. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm glad I'm going home one day, aren't you? Aren't you homesick today? Anybody homesick in the building today? Let me see your hands if you're homesick. I'm not talking about your address, where you're at, you live at, you're going to leave here to go to. I'm talking about our heavenly, our heavenly address. Oh, listen. There's a light in the window. The table says.
what the Lord's going to do. We want to receive our first time guest. If you're here today for the very first time, it is a joy uh, to have you be part of the service with us today. We want to do this. If you're here today for the very first time, just remain seated right there where you're at. Uh, but if you've been here before, I want you to stand up with me all over the building. Uh, just stand up. There you are. And uh, fellas, you go find those that are seated. They're going to come and put a packet of information into your hand. We'd love to pray with you and for you for any need uh, uh, that you may have. And we're looking forward to what the Lord's going to do uh, in your heart and do in your life. And uh, while they're doing that, uh, the choir's going to make their way up. The musicians are playing. And we'll have a time of fellowship. So shake somebody's hand. Tell them you're glad to see them. <laughs> Thank you. 
stand all over the house today as we worship the Lord today. I'm glad that I serve an awesome God today. I'm glad that I serve an almighty God today. When I was thinking about this this morning, when we come to church, it seems like we stand. But it seems like sometimes we don't worship when we stand. Almost we sing the songs, our lips are moving, but really are, is there any worship coming out of our lips? Today, I will challenge you here today. Because when we get to heaven, means when we get to heaven, it's not going to be just coming out of our lips, but it's going to be, our hands are going to be raised, and guess who's going to be there? The one that we've sung about, the one that we've wrote songs about, the one we've preached about, and many won't have a, we won't have a problem doing this when we stand before him. challenge you here today to worship the King of Kings today. Listen.
having peace Amen. when there seems to be no way you can have peace. And if you don't understand what I've just said, you haven't been through it long enough. Yes. But I promise you, you, there will come a day that God will speak peace in a situation when your whole world is in chaos and you don't understand why. You know it's going to be all right, but you know that God has it under control. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thankful that I live and there's a promise of a day of everlasting peace. Yeah. I like what this song says. It says that I'll rise above all the storms, above all the turmoil, <laughs> above all the trouble. I'm thankful that praise be to God in him that I can have peace, I can live in peace, I can know peace. And you say, preacher, I don't know if I know what you're talking about. I don't know if I can understand what you're talking about. I can tell you this. Uh, there's a God that will meet you right here where you're at today. Uh, and you can leave this place. Uh, and you can have peace in your life. Uh, you can have peace with God. Uh, you can have the peace of God. Uh, somebody give him some praise. Uh, and be thankful for the peace. I'm glad that it does give peace in, in the wee hours of the morning. I, I don't know about you. I don't know if you've ever been there before, but maybe not be able to sleep some burdens and trouble and worried about this and worried about that. <laughs> not knowing what tomorrow may hold. But then all of a sudden, the one that holds tomorrow shows up. And he lets you know that I hold tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And it don't make no difference what's going on in your mind or in your spirit that night. He takes you by the hand. <laughs> he takes you by the hand. Yeah. Puts his arms around you and lets you know that tomorrow is going to be all right. Yeah. Even before the sun ever comes up in the morning, he gives peace yeah. in the wee hours of the morning. Aren't you glad that we serve a God like that today? Yeah. Aren't you glad that, you know what, he, he, he was here long before we ever got here. Waiting for us, knowing the condition of our spirit, our mind, and all that's going around us. I know that some's come here today, I guarantee you, with a smile on your face, but burden on your heart. Let God give you peace to you.
have your Bible, if you will. First Kings chapter number 17. First Kings chapter 17. Thank you again. Aren't we blessed uh, in the area of music? Isn't that uh, just a blessing? It always encourages me. Uh, I'm going to preach just as quickly as I can. First Kings chapter 17. When you find that and you're able, uh, let's stand together and we'll uh, read the Word of God together, 1 Kings chapter number 17, and uh, look down at verse number 7, 1 Kings chapter 17, there we are, and verse number 7. <coughs> Brother Todd, you'll probably need to do something with the monitor on this one here, I don't know what's going on. Um, 1 Kings chapter number 17, and verse number seven, and we'll read that together. Let's see what the Bible has for us here today. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. And he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the woman, a widow woman, was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. Behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou said, but make me thereof a little cake first. And bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crucible fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that you'd help us. I pray, God, that you'd speak to us. I pray, God, you'd give us what we have need of here in this hour. Help us, God, in all that's said and all that's done. May it be done for your glory. We thank you and bless you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. This morning, as we look uh, into this uh, text, uh, it's a very familiar passage for most of us, probably. Uh, we talk about Elijah and Elijah uh, coming here and she, he, he spent some time uh, by a little brook uh, and after a while, if you remember the story, uh, Elijah was the one that pronounced the drought to come. Uh, Elijah stood uh, uh, before Ahab and uh, Jezebel and said, there will not be rain on the earth until it come by my word. And he lived with the repercussions, he lived with the effects of that prophecy that he had prophesied. And so there he was, God had sent him down to a little brook, and he was hanging out there by the brook. And the Bible said that the ravens came and fed him there. Can I say this, that God will feed you, God will take care of you, God will provide for you wherever your there is. Where God sends you, where God puts you, God has a promise of provision in your life. Uh, now, the brook has dried up. 
But know this, God was not done. God had other business to tend to. God was going to take this man of God and he was going to work in his life. He was going to show him some things and he was also going to work in the lives of others through him. Did you know your obedience or your disobedience sometimes will affect others in your life? Others may be blessed because of you. Others may be living under a curse because of you. Come on. Let me jump into this and say this. The good news for this situation, for this home that he was getting ready to walk into, is the famine was over. However, the bad news was the drought was not. The good news was that there was a promise of provision. However, the bad news was there was still a problem. How many of you know that there are times in your life that you get peace from God, you get peace, a word from God, and you know that things are going to be all right? However, outside, uh, things have not changed very much. Uh, this lady in her situation, uh, what she's, where she's living in her neighborhood, uh, in this region of her country, where she's at, things have not changed uh, a whole lot. However, uh, God made a promise uh, that things are going to turn around. Uh, now they live in a time frame. Uh, they live in a society where famine uh, and drought uh, had brought destruction on them. Uh, uh, there was no way that they just run down to the store. Uh, they couldn't go down to the Kmart. Uh, they couldn't go to the Walmart. Uh, they couldn't go to McDonald's. Uh, they couldn't go pick up something. Uh, there was nothing like that to be had. Uh, so the effects of the drought uh, began to have an effect uh, on everything around them as they looked, as their neighbors were dying, as their friends were dying, they no doubt thought, well, it's coming to me. And this lady had that idea in her mind. She said, I'm just going to make a little cake for me and my boy, and then we're going to die. Let me ask you this. Elijah was being taken care of by this brook but then it dried up. Have you ever felt like your river dried up? Come on. Have you ever felt like that you've just run out? Give me verse number seven there, um, Brother Todd. Have you ever just felt like that the thing that had been sustaining you, the thing that had been feeding you, the thing that's been helping you has now dried up? <coughs> and now you fear that you're going to dry. You don't know why you're going through what you're going through. All you know is that God was feeding you. God was helping you where you are. And God said, all right, it's time that we're going to do something different. I'm glad that Elijah heard, you got a word from God. Can you imagine? I don't know how it was. Maybe there were other people in the area. Maybe there were other prophets in the area. And as they watched that brook and that little creek start to dry up, they got in their mind frame and they got in their mindset that I'm not going to be able to go any further. I can't associate with this guy. I don't know why God's working in his life the way they are. Maybe they quit talking to him. But aren't you glad? Praise be to God when other people quit talking to you. There's a God in heaven that still talks to you. He told Elijah, he said, get away from the brook. I've got a little widow woman that I've commanded to take care of you. I've got somebody that's going to take care of you. Now, as we're looking at that, it's interesting that he, the Bible said he commanded that a widow woman would sustain him. Now, I don't know what he had in mind, but there are some widow woman, some, some women that are widows that I'm talking about, they got it going on. They got money in the bank. They got a nice house. They got all that. And they've been kept up and they've been taken care of. And maybe as he's walking over the Zarephath, he's thinking, man, I, I wonder what kind of 
fine arrangements God has arranged for me. What is it that God has for me? And he runs into a lady and he by chance says, hey, I'm thirsty. Would you get me something? And she said, oh, Sonny. Oh, can you just imagine her? She's going out to gather two sticks. Two sticks. <laughs> I was reading behind somebody and they talked about how, how that God made mention that it wasn't just a stick or a bundle of sticks. It was two sticks. You know you're broke. You know you're bad off when you count two twigs. Yeah. And Elijah might have thought my answer don't look like what I thought it looked like. Has God ever given you a command? Has God ever sent you somewhere? Has God ever done something in your life? And it didn't look like what you thought it was going to look like. Yes. Yes. There they were. The answer that God had given them did not look like what she thought or he thought it would look like. I wrote this down. Miracles are made out of need or miracles are disguised as a need. If there's no need to challenge you, there'll be no word to stir you. Elijah would have just stood, stayed by that brook, but it dried up. Elijah wouldn't have ran into this lady had she not gone in through the famine that she went through. And she is out looking for some sticks to make a little bit of a cake a little bit of meal. I ha have a little bit of a some sort of a, a, a meal for their, her family so that they'd eat it and die. It was the last they had. And she is out looking uh, to be able to take care of that. But God used the need and, and worked a miracle around it. You say, preacher, I don't understand why things are happening the way they are in my life. Can I tell you this? That God may very well have dried the brook up in your life. God may very well have turned the thing the way it is in your life because God is wanting to do something in your life. And the miracle will come through a place of need. I want to look at this. This lady, I, I, this is going to be a long introduction and just a short message here. This lady, she, she said, I, I'm going to take what I got and feed it to my child and we're going to die. When you think about eating, you typically think about I'm doing that to continue to live. But she already had in her mind there was no hope for her. There was no help for her. She was going to die. She this starvation that she was affected by had now began to affect her children. They feed, or they eat what we feed them. Listen, Mom and Dad. This lady was in a place of hurt. This lady was a place of want. This lady was in a place of no hope and no help. And all the child knew was what Mama was telling her. What uh, the parent was involved in. All that they were involved with is this. And you and I can work the same way. We get that mentality in our mind uh, that it, we're just going to live this day and then we'll die the next day. There's no hope uh, and there's no help. And we begin to feed our child uh, the same thing we're eating. They're eating the same thing we're eating. Uh, we get the mindset uh, that I'm just going to die. Uh, how many of us need to know uh, that we've got to find a place with God? We've got to find a word from God, a promise from God, a power from God. We've got to know because there's other people that will be feeding out of what we're giving them. And you, you say, but I'm dry, but I'm in a drought, but I, it's, it's, it's awful dry around me, preacher. I, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through, but I know there's a well of water that's still springing up. I know there's a place uh, that you can run to. Uh, I know there's one you can go to. Uh, and if you'll get a hold of that water, you'll never thirst again. Oh, yes. Now, here's 
this lady and she's about to die, about to give up. She's beginning to get that idea and feed that idea of no hope to that next generation. Be careful of the people you have the power and to influence. But you're not going to share with them the idea that things just can't get better. I still believe that God is on the throne. I still believe there's nothing that's going to happen tomorrow that God does not already know about. I still believe there's a God that's sovereign over the affairs of men. I still believe there's a God that looks down low and he sits way up high. I still believe that there's a God that the Bible said if a sparrow fell, he knew about it. I still believe there's a God that I'm counting the hairs on my head. I still believe there's a God that knows all about what you're going through, all about what you're facing. And we can get in our mind that God has given up on us. God has forsaken us. And we're just going to feed that to the people around us. Can I tell you, there's a God. That's the God of what's left. Hey, I'm glad. Praise be to God. God of what's left. He's the God of what's left. We look at this. Uh, let me give you a verse here. Let's look at this verse. First Kings chapter number 17. And uh, let's look at verse number 12. Verse number 12. It said, she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. Give me the first part of that one, Brother Todd, if you would just go back to the first part of that verse, verse number 12 there. As I begin to look and begin to ponder and begin to think about and pray about the God of God of what's left, there's many of us that can say, you know, I've written off the idea of things being better. I've looked back on my life and I've realized that some of my best days have already been lived. And I'm here to tell you that you don't have to walk around in defeat. You don't have to walk around in discouragement. And you don't have to walk around thinking that God has forsaken you because I serve a God of what's left. The rest of your life can be the best of your life. God can take everything that the devil meant for evil and he can still turn it around for the good. I serve a God. That's the God of what's left. So don't you sit around and look about what the devil stole from you, what life robbed you of, what everything you lost. I'm here to tell you, God can take the little bits you got left, and God can work a miracle. He's the God of what's left. Notice the measure of it. The measure of it. it said, I just got this little bit. She began to say, I, I have not a, a cake, it said, but a handful of meal and a little oil. And a cruise. Say, I just got a little bit. You know, God's just looking for a little bit. If you got a little bit of faith today, God can use you. You got a little bit of power in your life, God can use you. You got a little bit of love in your heart, God can use you. You got a little bit of strength, God can use you. Wow, there was 5,000 men and a bunch of other people, and they were hungry. And how did God feed them? He saw a little boy with a little bit of lunch. And he said, I take a little bit and I do a whole lot. Can I tell you this? God's still in the business of taking a little and doing a whole lot with it. That's right. 
the measure of it. Whenever Jesus had uh, prayed for a man, this man was blind. They took and put clay in his eyes. And he asked him, and he said, can you see? He said, I see me in the trees. They're walking around. I can't see at all. I can't see clearly, but I can see a little bit. Come. <laughs> Somebody ought to know where I'm going. See, you might not be able to see the end. You might not be able to see all the details, but you're starting to see a little bit. You start to have a little bit of vision. You start to have a little bit of sight. You start to see that God's working. God, I can't understand it, and I don't need to see all of it. But if you just let me see a little bit, if you just let me walk in the right direction, if you just let me go where you're going, if you just let me see what you're doing, aren't you glad God is a God of what's left? The measure. Let's look. I'll, I'll hurry on. Let me just let me pause. I'll give you this. Abraham. Abraham and Sarah were promised there's going to be a child. Well, years had come and years had gone. No <laughs> baby had, 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 had came. Abraham got his own little idea, got his own scheme, and he's still, and the children of Abraham are still dealing with that bad decision even today. But at the end of his life, he getting close to the end that he's 99 years old. His wife is 90. Finally, God said, All right, it's time to have a baby. Now, if it had been me, I'd have been Abraham and said, well, God, I, it would have been all right if you'd done this earlier. It would have been all right if you'd done this when I was younger, when my back didn't hurt so bad, when I had better sight, when I could get up and get down better. But here I am, 99 years old, I just got a little bit of life left. God, I don't know what you're going to do. But God said, that's all right. I can just take a little bit of life and I can do a whole lot with it. Amen. And the Bible said that Abraham's seed would be as the sand of the sea. And he would be the father of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He would make a nation out of somebody that looked like and felt like I just got a little bit left. I don't have long on this earth. I don't have long to do what you're going to do, God. But if you'll take a little bit, you can use it. Can I tell you this? The measure of your faith, the measure of this bit, the measure of the circumstance might look small to you, but God can take your little bit and do a whole lot with it. The ministry of it. Next. What you're looking at, what, what God's bringing to your heart right now. You're thinking, man, it's just a little. I don't think God could use it. I don't know if God would use it. What if? What if you put that man in God? What if you said, God, I'll give you my little bit, and I'll trust you with it? Notice the ministry of it. The, when you look through the Bible, the people that God blessed that got blessed always, they were always blessed, with, but not enough. They had never had enough to do anything until God stepped in. When there was a need, uh, the need brought the miracle. The need uh, attracted the miracle. I believe uh, with all my heart, the reason we don't see God work and the way we should in our lives, in our churches, in this land. It's because we live in Revelation chapter number 3. I have need of nothing. We live with that mindset. We don't think we need God. Man, we can figure it out. We can make a few phone calls. We can ask this person this. And we can run this. I was telling somebody about when we were in Bible college. Back when we were in Bible college, uh, when you went to the Walmart. Uh, you can float a check. I don't, some of y'all don't know what that means. Uh, but praise God, that's poor for you. Have a float a check. If you was going to get paid on Friday, 
you go to Walmart on Thursday night and you write the check because you knew it wasn't going to pass. It wasn't going to go through until the the bank could make the uh, the deposit on Friday and you'd be all right. Then they come up with this e-check business. That's right. right. And us poor folk was hurt. Uh, Yeah, I got some folk know what I'm talking about. (laughs) But I don't even know where I was going with that. The ministry of until there was a need, God would step in. We come to the place, we live in the place, we live in an hour. We act like we don't need God. You know, I'm sad to say this, but our churches, by and large, all over this land, we know how to do it. We do it. Sing just the right song, set the right mood, have just the right atmosphere. And everybody come in and man, we're the best thing on the block. We're the best thing around. Man, we're the best thing in town. And we have forgotten that we need more than people, more than money, more than lights, more than fog, more than sound. We need the power of God. That's right. We cannot get past the place that we don't need Him. I, I, it, 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 it scares me to think of how many times we operate outside of the anointing of God. Oh, we know how to do it. We know the right story to tell. We know the right song to sing. We know just when to throw our hand up. We know all that. We learned all that. And we get involved in all that. But we've forgotten that we need God. We need Him today more than we ever have. In 2018, going into 2019, I I promise you, we'll need God more than we ever have before. But we get this idea that, that, that we get this mentality that we curse the little bit. The, the little thing. We get beyond the little thing. God couldn't work in the little thing. God's got to do something big. Why well, ask Elijah how that worked? Elijah was stood there looking for God. And there was a whirlwind. God wasn't in that. There was an earthquake, a fire. God wasn't in that. Where was God? In a still, small voice. Yep. God was there. God will take a little bit. We've got to uh, to know that whenever God gives us a little bit, that's because God didn't give us a harvest. He gave us a seed. I'll say that again. When God gives you a little bit, he's not giving you the harvest. He's giving you a seed. He's telling you, I'm going to do more. I'm going to do greater. If you'll believe me, you don't believe me. Let's look at this, this story here. Let's look at this woman's life. Elijah comes along. She has this little bit. Elijah said, before you go and make your last meal, before you go and and eat your cake and die, make one for me first. Now, man, I'd take a real man of God to to, to look at a widow woman with a little boy about to die. And can you imagine what social media would have been like? Y'all ain't gonna believe what prophet so-and-so said. This woman was about to die. And he's taking her last little bit. It'd be all over the internet. The news be taking action nine be coming in. <laughs> but he was teaching her a principle of priorities. <laughs> we have got to learn the principle of our priority. And what we don't take care of. What we don't facilitate on a small scale, God will never let us operate in a large scale. God will never get some of, I hear people talk about it all the time, if preacher, if I win the lottery, I'll pay my tithes, we'll pay this church off. And you know what? The devil doesn't have that money long enough. If you win, praise God, we'll cash the check. (laughs) But I know this. If you ain't doing it now, ain't no way you're going to do it then. That's right. If you can't tithe off $100, 
You ain't going to tithe off $100,000. That's right. Now just go ahead and shake your head. It's about our priorities. Somebody said this. We buy what we want. The problem in modern society is we buy what we want and we beg for what we need. Yeah. We live in a, in a, in a time frame We've got our priorities all mixed up and messed up. We want to get what we want. And then we can let everybody else take care of what we need. That's not the way God put this thing together. God has given you, God will give you enough for what you need. And a lot of times he'll give you what you want. But until you learn, until I learn, until we learn that we've got to have a priority and getting what we need and believing God for what we want. We're going to keep on living the way we're living. We're going to go and get what we're going to buy what we want and we're going to keep on begging for what we need. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I get sick and tired of living like that at times. I get tired of not knowing that God's going to come through. I, a long time ago, Kelly and I had just gotten married, and things were tight. And I'll just be honest with you, there were times I didn't tie. There were times I barely tipped God. And God got a hold of me, and God got to work in my life, and we got to believe in God and trust in God. And I can't tell you I've all had an overabundance. I can't tell you that it's always flowed over, but I can tell you there's always been meal in the barrel. I can tell you there's always been a little bit of oil in the cruise. I can tell you there's always been enough. I can see we get this idea that maybe I'll give and God will bless me then. Maybe I'll just throw it out there and I'll gamble on this thing with God. I'm going to tell you, putting God first is not a gamble at a casino. It's a commitment to making a priority of putting God first. First, when he came to the woman, he said, make me a meal, a little cake first. Why? He was teaching her to put God first. And just as soon as she did, yep. then came the promise. He said, just as long as the, uh, there's no rain falling, there might be a drought. Oh, hallelujah. There might be a drought all around you. People might be kind beside you. People might be trying up beside you. But just as long as you keep me first, there'll always be meal in the barrel. There'll always be all in the room. God will take care of you. Yeah. And some of you think, well, he's just preaching on giving. No, no, no. I'm talking about putting God first in your life. Come on. Giving's just, just a little bit of that. Too many of us, we want to date God on Sunday and go do everything else we want to do all week long. Mm -hmm. Come in and hand God some little love note on Sunday. God don't want that. God's looking for somebody that's committed. Well, praise the Lord. Speaks of our priority. This woman's respect for the word of God was being tested. Are you going to believe God? Are you going to keep on doing it your own way? The, this story, of course there's a prophecy there. There's a promise there. But before that, it displays the priority of it. And somewhere, I have to believe this woman was raised up around the scriptures. Somewhere this woman knew that there was a God that would take care of her. The principle that maybe filled her mind was this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh, they, they decided I'm just going to keep it first. I'm going to keep it first. But we've got to learn to feed into what's feeding us. Now, I'm almost done. You, the, the lady was never given a promise that her meal barrel would run over. But she was given a promise it would not run out. Amen. I've never
may have never seen the mill barrel run over, but I'm thankful I can testify that it hadn't run out. Yeah. I can tell you that it may not run over in your life either, but I can also stand on what the yeah. Word of God said and tell you that it will not run out. Yeah. You might say, preacher, it's dry as cracker juice where I'm living. I don't know how I'm going to make it to another day. I can tell you this, when the Word of God comes, when God's Word comes, when God's man comes, just go ahead and put the Word of God, uh, put the Word of God, uh, put God to the test, uh, and go ahead and put Him first, uh, and see uh, that God will not take care of you. Uh, it might not run over, but I guarantee you, uh, it will not run out. Somebody give Him some prayer. Back in the Old Testament, kill you again. Back in the Old Testament, a liar, God, the promise he would feed the children of Israel. And if you remember, what did he do? He sent them manna, bread, to eat. They got tired of eating bread, and God sent them quail. You did a calculation on that one time, and it was just an astronomical amount of quail that the people had to eat meat that they paid for. And God took care of them. But when God wanted to teach us something, He doesn't send us bread. He sends us meal. She had to take that meal and mix it and knead it and work it and cook it to find out that God was faithful again and again. He showed Himself real. He showed himself mighty. You've got to discover the power of what's left. He's the God of what's left. And here's my last statement. We saw the measure just a little bit. We saw that God was only uh, interested in the measure of it. He was interested, interested in the ministry of it, how it would work in their lives. But it, it goes and talks about the miracle. Now, I, I've alluded to this, but I want to bring it out right here. The famine may have been over in her house, but the drought still surrounded her. Outside of her house, the drought stayed on. Uh, it would have overcome her. It would have gotten into the house. But she decided, I believe God. I'll trust God. See, the, the, the truth is, that famine uh, may be over when, when you believe God, but the drought is still surrounding. The drought is still all around. But you can flourish in a time of drought. You can flourish even though there seems to be a famine when God works in your life. When God comes through, I'm talking about the miracle of it. I want you to stand up with me. Some of you here uh, might, might just be a testimony. Some of you in here may be a, a, a prophecy uh, that you can say, you know what? I, I wasn't faithful, but God did it anyway. Some of you say, you know, I lost somebody in my life, but God was faithful anyway. I lost my job. But God was faithful anyway. Nobody in my family has ever succeeded. But God was faithful anyway. Everybody walked out on me. Everybody left me. But God stood by me anyway. Can I tell you this? He's the God of what's left. I wonder how many of us will take what little bit we got and say, God, I'm going to trust you with what's left. Come on, as we're coming, as you come around the altar, we're saying, God, I might not have a whole lot of life left. I might not have a whole lot of hope left. But God, what a little bit I got, I'm going to lay it at your feet. And God, I'm going to put you first. And God, I'm going to believe you. And God, I believe you can turn it around. He's the God who wants to live. How many of us will come and lay our hopes, lay our dreams, Lay our needs, lay our wants. Lay all that burden us. 
say, God, I believe you're the God of what's left. Heads bowed, eyes closed, knees are praying. I wonder if you're here this morning and say, Preacher, Preacher, I'm not. I'm not where I need to be with God. I know He's the God of what's left. And I want to believe Him. I want to trust Him. I want to know that. I want to walk in that. I wonder how many of us just throw our hand up by faith. God, would you help me to take what's left? Would you help me to believe you for the little bit and see you do great things in our life? We see those. We see those. Somebody else? Put your hand up and be back down. You're here this morning and say, Preacher, I'm not 100% sure if I were to die right now. Jesus came back. Preacher, I don't know for sure. Somebody like that. Preacher, would you pray? God, speak to me. God, help me. Anybody like that? Preacher, help me. I want God to be real in my life. I want to know that I'm ready to meet Him. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth of it and the truth in it. Lord, I just pray you have your will way. What goes on? Help us, God, to know you're the God of what's left. God, it's so easy to become focused on what walked out, on who walked out, on what we lost, and all that. But God, I'm thankful that you're still the God. Lord, have your will and have your way. We bless you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming to church today. Did you enjoy uh, being in church with God's people? Amen. God, praise <laughs> Amen. Uh, I appreciate what the Lord did for us this morning, and we're looking forward to what he's going to do. Remember, uh, we will not have service on Wednesday night. Um, a lot of folks start going out of town and getting ready for people to come in town and all that, so we will not have service on Wednesday night. On Tuesday night, uh, the Rochesters will be over at Victory Hill in Dallas. If any of you uh, like the, uh, the Rochesters, there's a wonderful family with the touch of God on them. They'll be over there and worship there uh, with them. Um, tonight, the teens will be getting together over at uh, Philip and Patricia's house at 4 o'clock. Uh, we'll have um, a time of fellowship together. And uh, we'll have a Thanksgiving, a teen Thanksgiving meal. And from what I understand, there'll be a deep fried turkey. So we're going to have to have an ambulance on standby. And so, uh, <laughs> No, I hope, I hope we know what we're doing there, and uh, praise the Lord. If you have Christmas trees or garlands that you're not using, please see my wife. Uh, please see Kelly. Uh, if you have garland or Christmas trees uh, that you're not going to be using, and keep that in mind. So 4 o'clock, teenagers will be over there. 5 o'clock will be uh, Bible Institute here. And so you come out and be with us uh, if you can. And... Uh, Let's, we got it down. We need to do that. Let's go and receive our guest, and then we'll receive a first time offering. Uh, or, uh, offering. There we go. First time guest, and then uh, maybe a first time offering. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Jason and Shannon, come help me real quick. Um, I want you to pray for Miss Tammy's mother. Uh, she has uh, had a stroke, they believe, uh, last night, and um, they weren't able to be here today. And so if you will just turn around and around. If you got those first time attenders card, hold those up in the air, and they're going to come take those out of your hand. And uh, this is my brother. Some of you may not know. I'm, I'm the better looking of the two, as you can uh, figure it out by now. <laughs> He's just leaving. All right. Now, I, I appreciate my brother. Uh, we've been serving God um, 
really, ever since we got saved, we've been serving God together, and I appreciate it. Um, he's a blessing to me. Uh, we're going to receive our, uh, our offerings, so those of you will, let's come. And if you've not had an opportunity to worship the Lord in giving, uh, we're going to do that together. Uh, you can give the old-fashioned way right there in the plate with a check or a card. Uh, you got a Rolex or something like that. You know, we might take that off your hands, too. Uh, but no, uh, if you're not able to give this morning, go ahead, fellas. If you're not able this morning, you want to be able to give, uh, you can do that uh, online. You can use our website. You can go there. You can also use our um, the app, uh, Timely app. You can do that with your mobile phone. Uh, you can give, and there, uh, you can take care of that. We also, if you, if you, you say, well, I don't know how to do all that. I just want to swipe it. We can help you with that, too. And so uh, any way that you want to give, you can give, and we can help you uh, take care of that. All right? Uh, let's be faithful in our giving. Let's pray. Uh, we'll go through the end of the year and the beginning of the next year. January is notoriously bad for giving in churches. And so we want to finish the year as strong as we can to, to help us. Uh, and we're going to believe God uh, to help us in January. All right? Uh, thank you for coming out. Let's uh, have a word of prayer. And let me say, if I don't see you, uh, I hope you have a, a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you go get to spend time with your friends, your family. Uh, be safe if you go somewhere. 